Polymorphism. Why do we need it? When do we need it? You guys have questions? I've got answers. Now, since you obviously all watched my video on object-oriented programming, you know that polymorphism is one of the fundamentals of it. It's one of the four pillars. But usually the reaction of people learning polymorphism, and I know it's true for me, is, okay, this is cool, but it seems very niche. Like, when would I ever use it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you guys three reasons or three use cases why you would wanna use polymorphism, with the third one being the most useful in my opinion. So stick around for that. So no sponsor for this video, so I'm just gonna tell you guys about the courses I released. The first is the Ultimate Java for Beginners course that doesn't require any prior programming experience and has over five hours of content with over 64 videos to make you a proficient Java developer. The second is my data structures course that's almost four hours and covers the most common data structures. I do plan to add more videos to that playlist in the future. And for a limited time, use the promo code Keep on coding 25 for 25% 25 off everything. Link to everything in the description. So the first use case is the one that gets used pretty much whenever anyone's teaching polymorphism, and that is having a list or an array of a parent type and having a bunch of different child types in it and looping through and calling an overridden method in the child. Let me show you guys. So let's first create a new class, and this is gonna be our parent, and let's create Pokemon. Now let's create one method that gets the attack value. And for now, we'll just return zero. So now let's create a child. So our first Pokemon, let's call it Pikachu. And it's going to extend the Pokemon class. And we're gonna go ahead and override that get attack value method. So for Pikachu, let's return a 10. Now, if we were doing this in real life, we would create a, an attack value here. Uh, and then we have like a constructor here and then assign the attack value here and then return attack value in the method. But just for this example, just to keep it simple, we'll just hard code the value in the method. All right, let's create two more child classes. Okay, so I went in and created two more classes. One is Eevee and it returns a five for get attack value. And then Charizard, it returns a 20 since Charizard is usually stronger. And in our parent class, we don't actually need this get attack value method. So for good practice, let's make it an abstract method. And since we have an abstract method here, we need to make the class abstract as well. Not really necessary for this example, but good practice. So let's create a Pokemon list. And then we need to import the list class. And then let's create an object of each child type. Now let's add each of these objects to the Pokemon list. And then let's loop through the Pokemon list and call get attack value. And then here we're printing out that returned value. So what's happening here is on every iteration of the loop, we're pointing to a different type of object. And based on which object it's pointing to, it's gonna call that version's get attack value. And we see if we run that, we get 10, five, and 20. So this is basically Java at runtime knowing which version of method it needs to call. So this is a great example of what polymorphism is, but not really a great example of when to use it or why we really need it. So let's look at another example. Okay, let's go ahead and delete everything except for our three objects here. So say we wanna create a method that doubles the attack value for a Pokemon. So we could do something like public static int get double attack value. So then we can have something like Pikachu P and then in here we can simply return P dot get attack value times two. Okay, so we also wanna do this for Eevee, right? So let's copy that. Let's change this type to Eevee, E, and then we'll return E dot to get attack value times two. Okay, we also wanna do this with Charizard. So we could copy it, make another method. But as you can see here, we're having a lot of like duplicated code, a lot of repeated code. 
a better way to do this is just to have one method that accepts the Pokemon type. And then when we want to call the method, we can simply call get double attack value. And then we can pass in any one of these objects. So we could pass in a Pikachu and let's simply print out the value. So if we run that, we see we get Pikachu's attack value of 10 times two, which is 20. And then we could also call Eevee and we could also call Charizard and we don't get any errors. As we see here, it returns a 40 and we don't get any errors because since all these objects are a descendant or they extend Pokemon, we're guaranteed that it has this get attack value method. So a simple, short example, but another useful case of polymorphism. All right, so in our final example, this is gonna be one of the best cases you can make for using polymorphism, and that is the ability to refer to interfaces instead of implementations. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so for this, we're gonna go ahead and delete all the Pokemon stuff here, and we're just gonna use a standard list. So say we wanna create a linked list of integers. So we can do linked list, integer, my list equals new linked list. Let's go ahead and add three items. So we added 27 and 12. Let's go ahead and print out my list. And then say for some reason we want to remove all these integers. So we could do something like my list dot pull. And if you don't know what that means, it retrieves and removes the head or first element of the list. So let's call that three times. And then print out list again. Okay, so if we run that, we see down here, we add the first three items, we print out lists. So we get 27 and 12. And then we call my list.pull three times. We print out list and now the list is empty. Okay, so everything is running great, right? But now for some reason say we realize, you know what? We actually need to use an array list here, not a link list. So you'd be like, okay, let's go ahead and change this to array list. Let's change this to array list, but uh oh, look what happens. Our program breaks because it says cannot resolve method pull in array list. And that's because pull is specific to link lists. So in this example, you know, it's not a big deal. There's only three cases. But say this is a huge program with hundreds or thousands of method calls like this. Well, you might have a problem. So what we sh could have done and should have done instead is just have a variable of our interface type. And now if we change this back to linked list, we could have done something like my list dot remove zero. And this removes an element at a specified position. So if we call this three times, we're doing the exact same thing as before. And if we run that, we see that we have 27 and 12, and then we have an empty list. And now if we say, you know what, we actually wanna change this to an array list. All we need to do is change this to type array list, and we are guaranteed that everything still works. And that's because since array list and link list both implement the list interface, we know that they have a version of remove. Right, so if we even go to the definition of array list, so I'm gonna do command click on Mac. If we go to the definition, we see that array list implements list. And we also know that link list also implements list. And we can do really anything that implements list, right? We could even use a stack here if we wanted. So if we import the stack class, we see that everything still works. And that's because stack extends vector and vector implements list. So the fact that our list variable refers to a list instead of the specific class gives us a lot of flexibility in case we need to change our code down the line. So hopefully that gave you guys more insight on polymorphism and when and why you would want to use it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding.